So in today's class, we are trying to think about the equation of state for a generic N body, N particle fluid with interactions. It's not an ideal gas. So the interaction in general is given by some U of all coordinates R to the power N. We will be typically restricting, we will be restricting today to pairwise interactions, I more than J, more than or equal to one, up to capital N, some small u, Ri minus Rj. This is the term that we will be thinking about. So <clears throat> in order to do that, we know what should be the limiting behavior. We know that the limiting behavior has to be limiting behavior of any such thing has to be pressure by kt is equal to rho that's the limiting behavior right this is true for this is true for an ideal gas what does that mean it means that either your small u tends to zero or your density tends to zero in either case or both cases typically that's what happens you get p by kt is equal to rho that's your ideal gas equation but in general that is not true for almost anything that is of any practical interest even even if you think of argon which is an inert gas an inert gas is not equal to an ideal gas even argon has hard sphere interactions if you bring two argon atoms very close to each other they will repel each other so this is not true even for something as simple as argon or neon or xenon, you know, the basic, even the rare gases. So clearly we have to think about corrections. And in PCAM or in thermo, you have probably seen such corrections. The first one that you see is something that looks like P by KT is equal to rho plus some correction term V2, which depends on temperature multiplied by rho squared and maybe some other correction term B3 also depends on temperature multiplied by rho cube, and you could in fact have higher order corrections. So it's like a series expansion in rho. This, these terms are called the virial coefficients. PCAM, we have seen generalizations of this. So for example, we have seen this or we have seen another one. Does anyone remember what's the name of the other one that is quite common in PCAM? Are you talking about your walls? Yeah. On the walls. Yeah, exactly. So how does Van der Waals look like? Van der Waals look like P by KT is equal to rho by one minus B rho minus a rho square over kt. It's a very similar form where b accounts for things having particles having size because ideal gas assumes that um, uh, things are point particles and uh, similarly a has a physical explanation also. So we are going to look at both of these things and try to think of them as to where do these expansions really come from and what could we do better we have one more person waiting okay great yeah <clears throat> so we are going to see that these equation of states for example so all, all, all of what we are going to do should reduce to P by KT is equal to rho in some limit, which is just the ideal gas interaction. But we should be able to derive these corrections which matter. And all of these are going to be complicated functions of this interaction potential. So that's what we are going to look at uh, today. So in order to do this, the first approach that we are going to take there are two approaches both of them are really similar and they will give very very similar expressions one of them is more generalizable and uh, you i will i will ask you to actually compare both of them once we're done with it but the first we're going to take 
two approaches to obtain and I'm going to write down equation of state. I'm going to abbreviate as EOS to obtain EOS for interacting systems. Both will assume pair interactions only, so pairwise interactions and uh, spherically symmetric molecules. So in this limit, that's what we are going to derive spherically symmetric molecules. The second approach is actually more interesting, I think, but let's, it, it, the second approach involves a couple of uh, thermodynamic uh, expressions that I have given you in the uh, homework, which is currently out. So we will be using those. You will be finishing the, those derivations in the homework and we'll be using those over here. The first approach is simpler. It's a more brute force approach. So approach one, is what do we want to do? We want to calculate the pressure. How do we calculate the pressure? In order to calculate the pressure from statistical, in statistical mechanics, if we knew the canonical partition function, then we could do partial of log of canonical partition function with respect to volume at constant number and temperature, and then we would get pressure. So this is a simple approach that we could take. In order to do this, we need to calculate the canonical partition function. The canonical partition function will be given by an integral. It's going to look something like this, right? e to the power minus beta u. Remember this u is a function of all coordinates, rn, multiplied by the position, dx1, dx2, dyn, dzn, xyz for all particle, all possible coordinates. And each of these integral, let's imagine I'm on an iPad so I can draw a nice box. Let's imagine that you are in a box with a box of volume V, cubic box of volume V, okay? So if the box has is cubic and has a volume V, then any x1 should go from zero to what value? Where should we stop this integral? Any guesses? Will it just be x1? x1, I'm saying what's the value of x1? Zero to what? If the box is a volume V, that means that this thing, every x1 is zero to mm -hmm. one by three. Right? So all of them v to the yeah, v to the third, uh, one third. So that's our integral. Lots of integrals. A crucial thing to keep in mind here is is this really the canonical partition function or did we forget something here? What did we forget? We don't have momentum in there. Yeah. yeah. We, well, well, go. Go ahead. See, or I think, yeah. We ignored the momentum, and we also ignored that in factorial h to the power three in business, right? For indistinct utility. Why is it okay to? Why is it okay to ignore these? I'm going to call this equation one. I know we stopped at some equation number, but it's going to become very large anyway. So I'll call this equation one. So if you look at equation one, we are going to take partial of log Q with respect to volume. What does this mean? First of all, two won't matter because we are differentiating as we differentiate. One won't matter, that is momentum coordinate because we are differentiating with respect only to position type coordinates. We are differentiating with respect to only volume. Momentum has nothing to do with volume because we are differentiating with respect to position in quotes, position style thing. Where is different, no, position is a bad thing to call it. We are di differentiating with respect to volume. So the momentum simply won't matter. So this is a simple observation, but this is something which will be useful in the future when you solve problems you need to calculate certain property and your partition function is a complicated function of many, many things. 
you don't have to calculate everything because just go one step ahead and see what will that calculation even matter if it's not going to matter and you're going to differentiate things why even worry about it so before someone asks me whether this is h or h cut i'm going to say like i don't know i don't care because it's not going to matter we it, it will matter for some other application but not here as you know the n factor will definitely matters when you think about entropy and uh, why does it matter when you think about entropy because entropy is not a simple derivative of the partition function that's the thing about entropy right pressure and things like that are derivative so all that garbage goes away but when you're trying to get entropy it's not a derivative you have to be careful that's why so this is kind of subtle but very important would have mattered for entropy as we saw in something which is called gibbs paradox in the midterm great so let's proceed so we have this integral that goes from zero to the power v one by three for every variable let's do a change of variables let's call x1 as v to the power one by three x1 prime similarly for all other variables x2 is equal to v to the power one by three x2 prime if you do this then what is dx1 dx1 over here is going to be v to the power one by three dx1 prime right and when this limit, if x1 goes to v to the power one by three, then x1 prime goes to one, right? So as x1 goes to v to the power one by three, x1 prime, which is per construction, x1 divided by v to the power one by three goes to one. Therefore, our Q becomes same integral but now we will have dx1 prime dx2 prime and the limit will be simpler it will be going from zero to one and the function will still be some e to the power minus beta u in parallel now we have to take into account of all these v to the power one by three that came out over here right so dx1 is equal to v to the power one by three multiplied by dx1 prime so we will also have a v to the power n that dangles up front. Uh, I, have a, I have a quick question. Uh -huh. I'm confused about the limits. Are, are we integrating each variable from zero to, uh, you know, the length of the box yeah. on that side? Yeah. But I mean, isn't it? So U depends on. I mean, so we're they're interacting, right? Yeah. And so wouldn't you have to like integrate out some of the coordinates and then the final one? The no, you will still be a function of x1 prime, x2 prime, x3 prime. Right, but I mean, so... It, it will have a volume dependence in it. Now you will have a volume dangling over here. Right, but you'll have things, I mean, we're doing like pairwise interactions, right? Sure. Right so now, we're gonna, generic. So. Right now we haven't done it. Right now it's any potential. Okay, but so like when you... Why don't you have to integrate like uh, x1 up to some function of x, uh, or not x, well, yeah, so x2, x3. No, I don't think so. so. This, this is simply a change of variables. Let me write it down even since this is a good point, but it's a simple change of variable. I haven't done anything. So q was, and I'm just going to write down three of them, x1 prime, sorry dx1, dx2, dx3, e to the power minus beta u, which is a function of x1, x2, x3. And each of them went from 0, 0, 0 to v to the power 1 by 3, v to the power 1 by 3, v to the power 1 by 3. Now I am saying change x1 to v to the power 1 by 3, x1 prime. Or dx1 equal Right, right. Right, I'm, I'm, more, I'm wondering about the limits to begin the limit with. Is, this, is, this is exact. We are not doing any funny business. Therefore, when x1 equal to zero, v to x1 prime, I, I know what you mean. You're saying whether the limit itself should become a complicated function of all the other variables. Right, because doesn't it depend? Nope, nope. The limit depend. is not dependent on the potential. The limit is set to be the range of the box, period. The limits won't change whether this potential won an ideal gas or a hard sphere or a Leonard Jones. It doesn't care about that. When x1 is equal to zero, x1 prime is equal to zero. x1 is equal to v to the power one by three, x1 prime is equal to one. Irrespective of u, that's what you have to understand here. This has nothing to do with you. This is just 
the limit over which you are integrating. Okay, so I guess I'm thinking of like, so situations where you, um, you would include the momentum too and say there's some... Oh, then it could become, uh, yeah. Okay, because like, like you have a harmonic oscillator, then X goes from, you know, so for some fixed energy, and then that puts yeah. a constraint. This yeah. is not like... No, it's not like that. It's simpler. Okay, so... <clears throat> So, okay, so our Q in general will have this form V to the power N dx1 prime, dx2 prime. Oh, by the way, this is Chandler exercise 7.11, which I'm solving over here. And uh, zero to one, zero to one, e to the power minus beta u. So, <clears throat> And uh, U was a function of R i j. It was the distance between two particles. So let's, that's what we will be differentiating with respect to. So let's look at R i j more carefully. R i j in the true space was X i minus X j square plus Y i minus Y j square plus Z i minus Z j square to the power one by two. Now that we have, let's, so that's equation one. Let's call this transformation as equation two. So using, and this is equation three, using equation two, Rij can be written as, you take Xi and replace Xi by Xi prime to the power V multiplied by V to the power one by three. So V to the power one by three comes out and you get Xi prime minus Xj prime whole square plus Yi prime minus Yj prime whole square plus Zi prime minus Zj prime whole square to the power one by three. Oh, by the way, so Suhas and Noah and Luke and Ben. Was it Ben? No, it was, it was Logan. Have you four received any offers from Hollywood yet? After your cameo in President Lowe's video? Oh, right. Um, I thought you meant I have the same name as a, as a, a Hollywood actor. I've known <laughs> a couple of years ago. That's why you thought well, you were referring you to might have, Then you might have double health. But I don't know if you guys noticed, President Lowe had a video yesterday for, you know, Shells United or something, yeah. which talks how... Yeah, yeah, saw that. And in that, there was a little... If you go up to one minute, and most of the times, uh, those videos are, you know, they're they are wonderful and they talk about other things. But here, if you keep going and you get up to one minute, you will suddenly see our class for five seconds doing potential of mean force. Uh, that was kind of cool. Yeah, I saw that. That, that was really neat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, good. So we have Rij is equal to this thing. So now let's look at equation three. That's our Q and what do we need from three? From three, we are going to do pressure is equal to this formula, Kt partial ln q by partial v at constant nt. So this thing has, be, has to be differentiated with respect to volume. Where does the volume dependence come from? The volume dependence comes from, first of all, this. The, the limits themselves don't depend on volume, but this thing depends on volume now. As you can see, because Rij has a dependence on volume. So as you can see, the math is going to get a bit funky. So uh, let's work through it. So, First, let's just think about partial Q by partial V. So it's two parts. First, we can differentiate with respect to V to the power N. That's quite simple. N, V to the power N minus one, no trouble so far, multiplied by the full integral. Zero to one, E to the power minus beta U, dx1 prime, dx2 prime, dot, dot, dot. Now comes the trickier part. We have to keep V to the power N constant this one is now kept up front and we have to differentiate all of this with respect to uh, volume. So let's see how to do that. We will have zero one, zero one dot dot dot, dx1 prime, dx2 prime themselves do not depend on volume, but this thing depends on volume. So let's differentiate that with respect to volume. That will be 
partial e to the power minus beta u by partial minus beta u partial minus beta u by partial volume correct just just a product rule so this is equal to n v to the power n minus one zero to one e to the power minus beta u uh, let's just look at this second term okay i, I don't want to keep writing everything again and again so let's just focus on this term and i will write it in red just to be clear so this is going to be this will give and i mean let's actually step it out one one more step so partial e to the power minus beta u by partial u multiplied by partial u by partial volume right that's the full thing now let's look at it overall so this thing is going to be what what will the this term get that will give us e to the power minus beta u so zero to one zero to one dx one prime d i'm just write dot 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 dx1 prime dot 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 and this thing gives e to the power minus beta u this thing will give us minus beta right so this minus beta can be brought outside let's write it as minus beta and we have a v to the power n over here so this thing gives us a minus beta this thing gives us a e to the power minus beta u this thing we have to deal with. Let's write it as partial u by partial v. And that's it. So let's now think about, and I will, if you see the movie Inception, this should remind, remind you of Inception. In every equation, we are going inside one layer deeper or like a deep neural network. Now we look at partial u by partial v. Partial u by partial v, let's first try to get it because that is really the beast over here. What's that going to be? That's going to be partial by partial v. And now, so look, so far we haven't invoked our pair approximation. Now we are going to do that. So this is going to be partial by partial v of i more than j more than equal to one all the way till capital N small u of rij. Right? That in turn is summation i more than j more than equal to one n this partial can be brought inside we can write it as d u of r i j by d r i j multiplied by partial r i and i might be being a bit sloppy with my partial and totals i don't yeah this should this should be um, this should be a partial or total i will, I will leave it a partial so we have this now if we go and look at our equation let's number it as equation four which is this one the relation for rij we can use this to calculate partial rij by partial volume how so i will not change a fourth color now i don't know how to do that on ipad i think i can go and select it somewhere but no so rij is v to the power one by three multiplied by x i prime minus x j prime whole square plus y i prime minus y j prime whole square plus z i prime minus z j prime whole square to the power one by two. So if we differentiate this with respect to volume, so partial r i j by partial volume, uh will be this term has no volume dependence that's the thing to keep in mind so this will be one by three v to the power one by three minus one multiplied by xi prime minus xj prime whole square plus dot 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 all to the power one by two so this in turn is one by three and if you multiply numerator and denominate so uh, v to the power one by three minus uh, one is one by v to the power two by three, right? 
so if you multiply numerator and denominator by v to the power one by three, then you get a volume in the denominator. And here you have xi prime minus xj prime whole square to the power one by two. Now, if you look at it carefully, you will realize that this we have seen before. What is that? Does anyone recognize it? That's Rij. Right? This is the definition of Rij. So we get Rij by 3v. So I'm going to draw a line here and write down the expression over here that we just derived. So this thing is therefore Do I want to do that? No, I don't want to do that. I will, yeah, so this is Rij and that's what we used over here. So now let's go back to equation number five and put in the value of partial Rij by partial V over here. So we had this ugly looking partial over here and we can go and put this thing over here, Rij by 3V. So what will that give us? We are page number five. F or partial u by partial v. And we can write it down by scratch. This is not a complicated formula. How did we do this? We said this is summing over all pair, i more than j is equal to one, going up till n, doing d u r i j by d r i j partial Rij by partial volume, right? This, this is the formula, this product rule. And we just showed that partial Rij by partial volume is Ri, Rij by 3V. So this is I more than J, more than equal to one, capital N, du Rij by D Rij multiplied by Rij by 3V. So now we can go and uh, put this back. This we are going to call equation number six. Use equation six in, I didn't number this equation, so I will call it equation five minus epsilon, okay? It's equation five's little brother or sister. So use six in equation five minus epsilon. So this value of partial u by partial v can be put over here and you can get partial q by partial v. And then we are almost getting there. This is all for the second part. So I'm still talking about the um, <clears throat> one moment, I do everything right. Yeah. I know the math is a bit gnarly, but follow the algebra right now and we can, we can take a break and go through all the steps that we have done shortly so it will become cleaner. Actually, let's do that. So how did, how did we get so far in this gnarly math? The first step was to say that Q is equal to e to the power minus beta U, all position coordinates, and all coordinates can go from zero to the power V, zero, zero to Q root of V, right? Then we did a change of variable. We said instead of X1 going from zero to V cube root, let's look at X1 prime, which goes from zero to one. So the Q was written as function of X1 prime, as you see over here, which goes from zero to one, a V to the power N comes outside. U is a pair term, and now we need to get pressure out of this. So we need to take log of this Q and differentiate it with respect to volume. When we do that, there are going to be two parts. There, are going to, there is going to be V to the power N, and there is going to be all of this, which has volume dependence. So in order to get pressure, we need partial Q by partial V. 
So partial Q by partial V comes from differentiating. We actually need partial log Q by partial V, but that is simple, right? That will simply be KT by Q partial Q by partial V at NT. So we are interested in uh, partial Q by partial V. So partial Q by partial V has two parts. First, we have to differentiate this and keep the, the part V to the power N and keep everything else constant. And then we have to differentiate the second part and keep V to the power N constant. It's the second part, which is very, a bit complicated. We did the first part. So let's now actually, so here, we will do this for second part, but first write down the full thing. So <clears throat> partial ln, and now I can go back to my black color because it is the full thing. So partial ln q by partial v, which is the thing that we are very interested in, is one by q partial q by partial v, right? And uh, it will have two parts. It will have a first part. Remember, because q is equal to v to the power n multiplied by really complicated looking things. So for the first part, it's going to give us, how do we do the first part? The first part is, this thing, right? So the first part we had Q is equal to, what's the best way to do it? Oh, we already wrote it down. For the first part, we wrote down our partial Q by partial V. For the first part, the partial Q by partial V is over here. So partial Q by partial V is N V to the power N minus one multiplied by DX one prime DX two prime E to the power minus beta U and everything going from zero to one. Now we have to de derive, uh, uh, divide this by Q. Therefore one by Q partial Q by partial V is going to be N V to the power N minus one. If, if, if the math looks complicated, hold on, because suddenly things are going to be like, what's, what's that game? Like Tetris, you guys have played Tetris, right? You're suddenly moving the blocks and it's become messy and suddenly everything disappears. It's going to be like a game of Tetris, I think. E to power minus beta u. And now we have to divide it by the partition function. What is the partition function? Well, it is zero, one, 0, 1, dx1 prime, dx2 prime, e to the power minus beta u. And suddenly you reach this realization, wow, these are the same things. And I forgot the v to the power n, right? That's your partition function. So this just cancels. And what you're left with is n by v. And suddenly you have a profound realization that math can be useful. What did you just derive? The first term gives you Wait, I got too excited, as usual. P is equal to KT, I forgot the KT. P is equal to KT, KT, KT. You just derived the ideal gas law. The first term, which is simple looking, gives us the ideal gas law. Or, P e by KT is equal to rho. So all the non-ideality is coming from the second term, which is complicated. So let's now go look at it. So this was the first part. The second part is, is going to be a bit painful, but let's work through it. So what do we want to do? We want to look at partial ln q by partial v for the second part. And how far did we get? For the second part, we, we want to use equation five minus epsilon. Use equation five minus epsilon and equation six. So 
this thing, what did five minus, so first let's state the conclusion of five minus epsilon for partial Q by partial V. So what did that tell us? That equation, so that equation told us that partial L and Q, did we do partial L and Q? No, we did partial Q. So partial Q by partial V, this is only for the second part, okay, is equal to minus beta V to the power N minus one, no N, minus beta V to the power N, all of these things, right? So we can write it down over there. Zero to one for everything, DX1 prime, DX2 prime, and partial e to the power minus beta u multiplied by partial u by partial v. This was just equation five minus epsilon. Now we can put equation six in it. And also we are interested in partial L and Q. So let's start dangling the Q over here and use equation six. Again, major simplification is going to happen soon. So don't lose hope. zero to one, zero to one. Let's bring the e to the power minus beta u over here. And this partial u by partial v, we just calculated to be equal to a sum over this thing. So let's write that down over there. Summation, i more than j more than equal to one till capital N r i j by three volume d u r i j by d r j d r i j and all of this is d x one prime d x two prime dot 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 now we will finally switch back from x one prime to x two now the x one primes are useless for us and we will remember recall that x one was set to be equal to v to the power one by three multiplied by x one prime. Therefore, dx one prime is dx one by v to the power one by three, right? So this equation becomes minus b v to the power n by q zero to one, zero to one e to the power minus beta u summation i more than j more than equal to one capital n r i j by three times volume d u by r i j by d r i j d x one d x two dot 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 divided by volume to the power n because each term gives a volume to the power one by three and there are three n of them you get volume to the power n and where does that volume to the power n go it simply cancels this thing out so it becomes a bit nicer. And now we have x1, so the limit needs to be changed. This limit again has to have or become v to the power one by three. Furthermore, we are looking at pair potentials where every pair of atom is interacting through the same function u. Every pair of atom has its own other dist separate distance. Maybe this one is one angstrom, maybe this one is two angstrom, but the function that governs the interaction is the same u. With that realization, what can we do with this thing? Can we simplify it further instead of dangling all the summations? How many pairs will be there? n, n minus one by two pairs right? And every pair will simply contribute its own rij by 3v multiplied by du rij by d rij. There is no difference. There is no point in doing this summation again and again and again because we just have n and minus one by two pairs. So I'm going to erase this part because I want to write right below it. 
So we have n, n minus one by two pairs. So this becomes minus beta by q One moment to write this something. Okay. Oh yeah, sure. Minus beta by q zero v to the power one by three zero v to the power one by three e to the power minus beta u and crucial that this u is not the small u. This u is the full summation over small u. This one we are still keeping. We haven't done anything about it. But this term over here, let's draw a bigger one. will be n, n minus one by two. Let's just call it R12 because we don't care which pair are we looking at, divided by three V. D small u of R12, dr 12 multiplied by dx1 prime, f not x1 prime, what was I thinking? Let's keep the, those things over here. D x n d x one it's not prime this can be simplified further the two and three becomes six together the volume can also be brought outside so you get a minus beta multiplied by n and n minus one all of these things the n n minus one the two the three volume these things can all be brought outside so you get minus beta times n n minus one divided by six times volume one by q still remains and now this integral dx1 going from zero to the power v1 cube dx2 going from zero to the power v1 cube all the other ones e to the power minus beta u what else remains d small u by d r12, where this is a function of r12, multiplied by r12. Did I get it right? Yes, I get it right. So let's call, I mean, I warned you the math gets gnarly. That's why it was a start problem in Chandler. So this becomes equation seven. So, and what's the page number here? It's page number six. In page number seven, let's rewrite equation seven. So let's rewrite equation seven. And remember, what is equation seven talking about? Equation seven is talking about partial ln q by partial v. Only for the second part, not for the ideal correction. Equation two is only dealing with this part over here of the partial q by partial v. So let's write equation seven again. And uh, we have partial ln q by partial v. And I'm just going to rearrange the terms once again. It will be minus beta n times, let's, let me not rearrange first, let me just write it down at exactly what I had. Minus beta n times n minus one by six v multiplied by one by q dx1, dx2, dot, 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 everything going from zero, v to the power one by three, e to the power minus beta u, to keep in mind, this is capital U, this is a sum over all the pairwise potentials, d small u, r12 by d r12, multiplied by r12 itself. Now we can do a little bit of arrangement and then it starts to simplify suddenly, again like Tetris. So we can write this as b, Bet minus beta n n minus one by six v d x one d x two right so these two first variables I'm going to bring out 
multiplied by R12, this I'm going to keep over here, multiplied by D u of r12 by dr12 and the whole thing can now be written in a compact can be written down separately the other things are integral dx3 dx4 dot 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 e to the power minus beta capital u divided by q Yeah, this is gnarly. And this equation, we are going to call equation number eight. So let's take a moment, let, I'd like everyone to look at it for a moment, meditate over it, if they're happy with the algebra. No one seems to have protested, so I'll assume you're happy with the algebra. And since you're so happy, I'm going to do one more change. I'm going to bring the n, n minus one, I'm going to bring inside. It's a constant, right? So Okay, I did nothing profound. Have we seen this thing in the square bracket before? We got to exactly the same point last class when we were looking at the average of u. Once again, this is nothing but row two of R1, R2, right? It's the same thing. So what did we get? Now we can switch to uh, spherical particles and get rid of X1 and X2 separately for spherically symmetric particles. What we just showed is that partial ln q by partial v and now I'll write the full thing with both terms is n over v that was the ideal part minus beta over 6v integral r12 du of r12 by dr12 row two of r1 comma r2 so this is still not spherically symmetric this still has a vector component but here we can say that row two of r1 r2 is nothing but rho square of g of r so we are not talking about r1 and r2 separately we switch to g of r and uh, du of r1 r2 by dr1 r2 is simply u prime of r just one variable and uh, this is over here we have to integrate over a vector so integrate over spherical coordinates to get finally that <coughs> E by KT is equal to rho minus beta by 6V. So what do we mean by integrating over spherical coordinates? We are saying you have a dr1 and now you have a dr12 prime multiplied by U prime of R multiplied by rho square G of R. This thing is volume, integral dr1 is volume if you look at the first particle. So this is rho minus beta by six and a vector dr u prime of r rho square g of r, which in turn becomes rho minus 
and I've, the volume volume got cancelled. So beta by six can be written as one over six kT, right? And the rho square can come outside. So it becomes minus rho square by six over kT. And when you do this integral in spherical coordinates, you get four pi r square, but now it goes from zero to infinity. And here, I missed something. I also had the r. I was missing this r, this r over here. So we also need to dangle uh, r12. So multiplied by r. So 4 pi r square, r, u prime of r, g of r, dr. Or p by kt is equal to rho minus rho square by 6 kt, 0 to infinity, 4 pi r cube, u prime of r, g of r, dr. And that's what we had set out to derive. This is an equation of state for interacting non-ideal system. And now if you compare it to your VL equation, then P by KT is equal to rho plus B2 of temperature multiplied by rho square, then you have the exact value of B2 of temperature that you can get from this. So in PCAM or in thermodynamics, B2 is a parameter that you fit to experiments. Now you can actually see where is the B2 coming from. If you have a scattering profile, then you can get G of R. If you have a model for the interaction, then you can get G prime of R, you can calculate B2. This is fine, there is one problem. VDL expansion also goes beyond. It also talks about B3 of T rho Q, and in fact, more and more, you cannot obtain B3 from this treatment that we did. So is that, we, we assumed pairwise interactions here, right? The little yeah. U of R. So is that kind of like a general rule? I mean, so we just have two body interactions. So that gives us this next term. And then if we had maybe three body, we'd get the rho cubed or something like that. No, you can have rho cubed even for pairwise interactions, as you will see. Uh, okay. You don't need to, so it's a good question. But Ben just said that since we did, is it okay to just stop at rho square? It's a, it's a brave claim because we used this formula for the interaction, which is pairwise, but no, even for here, it doesn't really look from this. It looks like, oh, for pairwise, there is nothing, right? Where could a rho cube come from? We just stopped. It might be true, but let's look at the next, next way of deriving this equation of state. That's mathematically a bit less clumsy. It's a bit more elegant. And there you will see how to obtain higher order corrections. And then when you compare to this, this is, I, I can't really answer your question right now because I want you to think about it. And it's going to be on the next homework or I will ask you to think about it anyway as to how do these two methods compare. So any question about any of this? So I want everyone to take just like a two minute break. We have still 15 minutes left. I don't want to stop early, but I want to start something which is nicer, but a bit different from what we did. Trying to get the same thing. We are still trying to get the equation of state, but it's a second approach. And we want to, you to have slightly fresher minds. So I'm gonna stop my video. I'm going to take a break just for two minutes and we will be back. Till then do whatever you want, look at the equations. Whatever. Okay, so see you in two minutes. Uh, screen share starts to stop. So let me do that once again. Okay, so what we did in today's lecture so far was to take kind of a very brute force approach. We were confident in our knowledge of statistical mechanics and how it connected to thermodynamics. We wanted to calculate how does the pressure depend on density. And we said, well, we know how to get pressure. Pressure is given by partial log of Q with respect to volume. So only if we could calculate partition function Q, we can do everything. So we set forth on this path. And this path was gnarly. The math was a bit obnoxious. You know, but we, but we did it, we got an equation and I'm never going to give you exam problems. Okay, never say never. If I give you a take home problem, then I can give you some. And exams will be all take home now. So, okay, I take it back. I can give you problems where the math is complicated like this, but maybe not so complicated. 
But now let's take a very different approach, looking at the problem from a more physical perspective and try to derive similar equations of state which depend on corrections intensity. The approach will <coughs> focus on the potential of mean force or PMF W of R. So if you recall, W of R was the work that you have to do is W of R is equal to reversible work to move two particles from infinity separation to a separation of R in presence of many other particles and averaging over their behavior, averaging over their behavior. And this second part is what makes this W of R complicated. If we were to ignore this, if one was to ignore the presence, so here we are talking about separation of R, starting from a separation of infinity. The presence of other particles. And if you thought about bringing two particles from all the way out at infinity to a separation of R, then the problem should be simpler. What would be the W of R in this case? So let's say this is vacuum, there is nothing else. W of R in this case, assuming pairwise interactions between the particles, what should be the value? Any guesses? I haven't asked uh, Emily a question in a long time. Emily, what do you think? Um, I don't think there would be any work. But they do interact through a potential. These two things, you're right. If these two things did not interact, then there would be no work. But these two things do interact through a potential U of R. So the work would be U of R. It's the potential energy that you gained, right? These two particles were out in the solvent out at a diff inf when they were out at a distance infinity the potential energy was zero and now you brought them to a certain potential energy so either you gained work out of it or you lost work out of it. but that is the potential energy right thanks so you're right there would be no work if there was complete if they did not interact but if they interact then the potential of mean force is the potential energy that you have okay thanks so so this is nice this is true if you were bringing the particles close together in vacuum, there was nothing else. But in general, there is there are other things and they are going to have an effect. Let's call that effect as delta W of R. So this is the correction due to other particles. So hopefully this equation gives you a bit more intuition into potential of mean force in number eight. Is number nine. So what can we say about delta W of R in very low density limit? As rho tends to zero, what do we expect of delta W of R? Where should it go? Anyone? Doesn't it also go to zero? Yeah, exactly. So limit rho tends to zero of delta W of R is zero you again the w of r does not disappear the w of r does not disappear but you are left with just the potential energy and life becomes simple what this tells us is maybe we should think about expanding our w of r and powers of density so let's see how we can do that and that's why i like this approach it's more elegant apart from two thermodynamic tricks which you are going to do in your homework so it's i gave you those statements in advance we are going to use them over here they are not hard, but it's a bit of thermal. So 
let's look at our g of r. That's the thing we are really interested in, which we defined as e to the power minus beta w of r. And here we said w of r is equal to u of r plus delta w of r, right? So this equation is exact. This is exact. There is nothing wrong here. This is, we just said there is u of r and whatever that is not captured by u of r, we call it delta w of r. Delta w of r can be as complicated as you want. There is nothing wrong here. So if we use w of r is equal to u of r plus delta w of r, then g of r is e to the power minus beta u of r multiplied by e to the power minus beta w of r. Now we know that delta w of r goes to zero as rho tends to zero, right? So we can write down e to the power minus beta delta w of r as using the formula e to the power x tends to one plus x or e to the power kx tends to one plus kx. So this thing is going to be approximately one plus something that is of the order of delta w of r, right? which is the same as one plus order of density or g of r is equal to e to the power minus beta u of r multiplied by one plus something which is linear in density to first approximation and this is where you could start doing higher order terms if you really wanted this is our window to deal with this problem And uh, so this is an important equation, this eight, I don't see a nine. So let's call this as equation nine and let's call this as equation 10. Now recall that in the last class, we derived an equation for, let's go to the lecture for the last class. Oh, it showed up right here this equation, right? Rho by two, three, average energy is three by two kT plus half rho dr four pi r squared g of r u of r. And in fact, we had a vectorized version of this thing. We had d of r vector g of r u of r multiplied by rho. So let's use this equation and try to play with it today. So we showed that average energy by n is equal to three by two kT. And again, you can start to see similarities. Remember when we did the complicated mathematical way, we had a first term that counted for ideal gas. Similarly, this is the term that counts for ideal gas. And in ideal gas, you have energy coming only from momentum. So this is the term we would have. So we showed that we have half rho dr g of r, potential u of r, right? And this is a vector. So here we can use the spherical coordinates. So put equation 10 in this. We can use the value of g of r over here. So what do we get then? Then we get that average energy is equal to three by two, average energy by n is equal to three by two kT plus rho by two dr we are going to keep u of r so u of r stays as it is multiplied by g of r and for g of r, we are going to use this formula. e to the power minus beta u of r multiplied by one plus order of rho. 
this thing is like the energy of an, it is, the, it is not like the energy of an ideal gas, it is the energy of an ideal gas divided by N. So we can think about the deviation from ideal energy. We can think about deviation from ideal gas energy, delta E. So what we have here is delta E by N. So difference of this minus this is equal to rho by two dr e to the power minus beta u of r u of r one plus order of density wow it really started thundering cool this is where we use the relation you are deriving in homework four from thermo that delta e by n is equal to partial beta delta A by N divided by partial beta. You will be deriving this and we are going to use this over here. So I'm not going to prove this over here because it will just uh, uh, take too much time in doing it right now. It's not hard. So, so A, and it's a good refresher for you for your thermo before you think that you're done with thermo. So delta A here is excess Helmholtz free energy related to ideal gas. So we can use this equation in the left hand side over here. We can substitute it with this one and we get partial beta delta A by N by partial beta is equal to rho by two dr e to the power minus beta ur multiplied by u r one plus order of density. I don't wanna go further because it's interesting. So next time I will start from this slide, this note and continue this integration. What we are going to do now is to integrate in temperature, integrate both sides. And if you want to read, uh, so in this chapter, since it's complicated and following Chandler to the dot, what we did in the first part today was to solve one of the problems. So that part, if you try to go and read in Chandler, you won't find much help because he just leaves it as a problem. So the first part today was problem 7.11. This part is all given in after that part. So this is page pages 205 to 206. So I invite and request you to go and read that. It will help you. And that's what we will finish next time. And then we will again get an equation of state which looks very similar to the Virial equation of state. That's what we will do next time. Okay, so today I have office hours 3 to 3.30. I will have my Zoom open. If you want to come and discuss something, I will be here and I will have another office hour Monday 3 to 3.30. Any questions about any of this or anything else? Okay, enjoy the rain. See you at office hour or next time.